It's been a little while since we've looked at twist patterns or other ways that you can twist a barb besides just taking a square bar and twisting it up in the vise. Today I thought we would look at what's referred to as a wheat twist or a chevron twist. I think I've heard it referred to both ways, so I'm not sure that there's really a difference between the two. And to do this, this is another forge welded twist. So I'm going to start with some quarter inch round bar. That's about six millimeters round. These are 14 inches long which looks like it's about 36 centimeters. And I'm going to bend them in half and lightly forge weld the ends together. That doesn't have to be real strong. That's just to help them behave when we twist them the first time in the vise. And I'm going to then twist these in opposite directions. One bar left, one bar right. Then we'll show you what else we're going to do to it. So we just want to heat in the center. And I'm going to do this in the coal forge because it's pretty nice to do the little short welds we need in the coal forge. But you could do it in a gas forge, as long as you can weld in your gas forge. And then we'll just bend this right in the middle. This is a place where a torch would be good. It, you could mark your center and just get a very precise heat. But we can come pretty close eyeballing it and doing it at the anvil. And by the time we're done, it won't matter if they're a hair off. This one's about an eighth of an inch off. No big deal. And that's all we want to do to that. Now we want to forge weld this end. But first, let's bend the other one and get it to the same point. I'll set this one aside while we weld up the first one. And it's real easy to burn this little bar, so keep an eye on it. Just the teeny tiniest amount of flux is all we should need. Generally, Generally, we are looking for a lemon yellow color in the bar. If it's sparking, you've gone a little bit too far. If it's sparking a lot, you've probably ruined it. A few sparks are okay, especially since this flux I'm using, it's an iron mountain flux. It's got a little bit of iron in it, so that will spark before the material burns. So you just have to learn to judge these things. I'm going to keep turning it to make sure it heats evenly. I'm just going to weld this very lightly. I just want it to hold together. I'm not trying to make a permanent weld at this point. Yeah, that's good. Just a few light blows is all it should take. That's a good weld. I'll set this aside and weld the other one, then we'll do the twists. And that's welded well enough. So now we need to twist these. Now for this pattern to look right, we need to twist one of these pairs of bars to the right, one pair to the left, or that's clockwise and counterclockwise, or G and HA, or however you need to think of it in your mind to make sure that you end up with mirror images. You don't want two identical twists. That might look good, but that's not what we're after for this project. You also want to make sure you twist them the exact same number of turns for the best results. So we're just going to do one at a time, and we'll start doing the first one clockwise. And I'm going to put the weld in the vise so it's well supported, less likely to shear as I twist it. Oops, just hit the camera. I hope you're still in focus here. And that's one turn, two turns, three full turns, let's go to four. 
and I've left some end untwisted here. So that's four, four, four full turns clockwise. And we'll explain why I've left so much untwisted. Try and get it all straightened back out as much as you can. That's what we're after. Let's see if we can make the next bar match it. So we want to lock the same amount in the vise. And try and put the wrench on in the same place. And then we're going to go four full turns counterclockwise. It's one, two, I think that's three, but let me, let me double check. Yep, one more. It's looking awfully tight already. And hopefully this results in two opposites. And that looks pretty darn good. Let's do a little straightening. This one was a little bit better. Now you're probably already with me on this one. We want to forge weld these side by side. And I'm just going to forge weld the ends. I don't want to forge weld the twist because we'll really mash it and destroy it if we do that. We are going to flatten it before we're done, but to start with, I just want to get the ends forge welded. To help guarantee that these will stay together the way I want them to, I'm going to wrap them with some baling wire. And I'm going to wrap them kind of back in the middle because I don't want to just burn the baling wire off while I'm coming up to forge welding heat. And this won't be a perfect tight way to hold these. So you still have to be very careful moving them around in the fire and getting to the anvil. Another option would be to put a little tack weld, bend everything into the middle so you can tack weld the ends with a MIG welder or something like that. And, and that would work, but if you don't have that, you can forge weld, weld them without and use baling wire. Another thing that can really help is putting a pair of tongs on with a tong clip so that holds them together while they're in the fire. So I'm just going to sneak off camera real quick and bring these two ends together. And then just a, a touch more flux just to make sure that I didn't knock it all off there, but it doesn't need a lot of flux. These are open enough the flux is going to get in there. Those are getting real close. Real easy to burn this little stuff up, so keep your eye on it. And just kind of look down in between the pieces of coke so I can see what's happening. That looks pretty good. And then weld them together gently. And we'll take another welding heat at this later, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it around and work on the opposite end first. You can kind of see the pattern developing already. And keep an eye on this stuff. You might see something happening here that is interesting for some other use. 
So pay attention to it. It could be some sort of animal horns or something like that. Just like I did with the other end, I took this to the vise and I brought these together so they will so they'll weld together more readily. Real easy to get this really scrawny and skinny at this point, so be careful. I'm going to go ahead and bevel this and scarf it so that I can weld it onto a handle. And then it can be a fireplace tool or a forge tool or something of the sort. That'll just make it easier to work with it as we finish this. So I'm going to do the same thing with a piece of 3 8 square bar. And upset it a little bit. And create your scarf. And these two pieces then should go together just like that. We have looked at this kind of welding before, a scarf weld, or in this case often called a drop the tongs weld. And I'll link to a video that covers that right up here in the left hand corner, so I don't have to completely explain the entire process in this video. But in any case, it pays to rehearse this kind of a weld before you try to bring it up to heat. I know that this piece has to be face up on the anvil, and this piece has to hold it in place while I drop the tongs, pick up my hammer, and make the weld. So there's a little coordination involved, and the more you practice it without welding, the more likely you are to get it. It's also better to practice it on things that don't matter before you try and do something that's important to you. This is also a place where they tend to want to move and skitter at high heat, and different fluxes affect that differently. Borax flux seems slippery and slimy to me, so I don't use borax for this. I'll use the Iron Mountain or the Easy Weld. It seems to be a little stickier, and it's less likely that these are going to slide out from under each other. So another dry run. I bring them together just like that. Drop the tongs, grab the hammer, make the weld. Let's see if it actually works that way, or if that happens. Light rapid blows and then back in the fire. I want to kind of refine the weld and make sure the scarves are stuck down. But be careful not to go too thin. I want that to end up as a 3 8 square bar to match this bar. And if necessary, we can take one more heat. I'm not quite as thin as I could be. And I think it looks pretty good. But just to be sure, we'll put just a touch more flux on there. Just a few select places. And also be sure that you're hammering with your decorative twist off the anvil, otherwise you're going to end up messing that up while you're doing this. The next thing I'm going to do is just simply straighten this up. No heavy hammering here. I just want to get it back in line. Then I'm going to finish this up and put a little ring handle on that so you can hang it from a hook or something. Then we'll do the last little step to our chevron. I'm at a welding heat and I'm going to draw this out. 
this might shear apart. Remember, there's four little bars in there. The end is shearing a little bit. So I'm not going to work the end anymore right now. So I'll put some more flux on that end and see if we can re-weld it. That's pretty common when you get trying to draw out four bars into a little tiny point. So real light blows, turning at 90 degrees each time to try and get all that to go together. Still being a little ornery. But I think we got it welded. I'm not going to overwork it at low heat, so back in the fire. Just make this whatever you want it to be. I just want a nice, delicate ring on the end. That, that sheared apart again. That's really common, like I say. It's it's just one of the problems with trying to draw something that's got that many layers out that thin. It's one of the problems you run into working wrought iron. I'm going to try it one more time to weld it. If it doesn't work, we'll end up cutting that part off. But it's almost what I want. So if I get it to stick at this point, we're going to quit. Yeah, it looks better. I want to round this up a little bit. Be very gentle on that tip so we don't blow it apart again. Now I realize that a lot of this stuff has absolutely nothing to do with the chevron or the wheat twist that we're working on, but you need to do something with the twist when you're done with it. So it really makes sense to go ahead and weld it to a handle if it's going to be a fireplace tool, a poker, a shovel, something like that anyways. This is the time to do it. So this is just a normal progression for me to go ahead and do all that and then finish the decorative element kind of at the end so I don't mess it up while I'm doing the forge welding. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and finish this little curl on the end. And then we'll back bend this. I'll get it hot one more time and we'll put it in this little jig and we'll bend the ring. Yeah, it looks like that jig's a little bit too big for the ring I'm going to end up with. Always a little fussing and fiddly. Looks like that's split again. That's kind of what happens when you get in a hurry for the video. But, you get the idea. And that could probably be welded up with a torch and 
it would go away or you could cut it off and just make a blunt end ring. Always disappointing when that happens, but it does happen. So now what do we do with this? Well, you can leave it just like this if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that effect. But I like it better if it's flat, if it kind of comes together, and this is more of a rectangle. So I'm going to very gently forge it down, but I don't want to do this at welding heat because I don't want to weld this or deform it too much. So I'm going to be very gentle with it. So we are well below a welding heat. That's really all this needs to have done to it. Just take one last moment to straighten it up and do anything that needs to be done to make it look just right. Now I would have the option here of straightening the ring out and re-welding it, but I'm not sure it would take at this point, so I think I'll probably take the torch and weld it, and then we'll file it to get rid of any lumps, bumps, or anything else. Not my preferred way of doing it, but it will certainly work. Sometimes we all get just a little bit lazy and think we can do just a little bit more work than we should. In this case, that curl where I kept having problems with it welding probably would have done better if I'd stopped and cleaned the fire. Because now that the fire's out, I have pulled a really nice big clinker out of the bottom of that fire pot, which means I did not have a neutral fire, I did not have a clean fire, and those things are both vitally important to get good forge welds. So the fact that I was trying to just get that last little bit done without doing what I knew I should have done is what bit me on this, and now I'm going to have to fix it. So let that be a lesson to you. Anyways, we've got a very nice chevron twist. The only problem with it is a little bit of a delamination in that ring, and that's something I can go back and fix. I've seen lots of versions of this. I've seen, I've seen two pairs of bars like we did here. I've seen three. I've seen four all side by side. I've seen four done in a perfect square bar pattern so that there's one on each corner, and each pair that you ever see are twisted in opposite directions, so the opposite corners are the same on either side, but that's a very interesting effect. I kind of like the flat version of it like this. I think it makes a comfortable tool handle, nice fireplace poker, nice fire tool for your coal forge if you need something in the shop. It would probably also make a nice hook back or something like that. If instead of a ring here, you do something to mount the hook, draw this end out into a hook, all sorts of possibilities that you can do with a twist like this. Let your imagination fly and see what you can come up with. I know people shy away from doing projects that involve forge welding, but I consider that it is an essential skill of a well-rounded blacksmith, and the sooner you learn it, the sooner you'll get good at it, and the more things you'll be able to do, it opens doors for you. It's not some arcane mystery that you need 20 or 30 years as a blacksmith to figure out. You should learn to forge weld your first year in blacksmithing, and then use it as often as you can so you do get good at it. And then you can do all these really cool twists and composites. And if you're into knife making, that opens the door for doing some pattern welded steel, which you can't do without forge welding. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed doing the twist with me. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to watch more of the videos, share the videos with your friends or on your social media sites. But by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.